Ephesians chapter number 6, verse 10 to verse 10 going. The Bible says that finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength or in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present dark age or darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand firm, stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Beloved, warfare and prayers are part of our DNA as Christians. So many a times you need to just be on your own, whether in church or in your room or in your car, to begin to pray and come against demonic attacks, demonic plots. That's how we have been taught by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Irrespective of your situation, you must be able to, you know, wage a warfare because life is spiritual. Somebody could be set, sitting somewhere and then casting spells. You need to fight back. You need to send their plots, their, their plots, their activities, evil, incantation. You need to send it back to them. That's how life is. Life is spiritual. James chapter 4 verse 7. The Bible says that submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So every spiritual warfare, every prayer as a Christian dwells on your faith in the word of God. You trust that whatever that Jesus said, he has overcome the enemy. He's given us authority over the enemy. Over the enemy, do you trust that? Do you believe in it? That's the most important thing. So as a Christian, you must believe that whatever you bind, according to Matthew 18, 18, God will also bind in heaven. Whatever you lose is also loosed in heaven. That is the authority Christ has given us. So James uh, 4, 7, again, he says, Submit yourselves, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5. The Bible says that for though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh. Or another version will say they are not carnal, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We just to destroy arguments and every evil opinion that is raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. So what God is trying to say that whatever that God has said concerning you is what you, you pray and that's what you activate upon your life. Every evil thought that they send, how they want you to see yourself, you let the word of God rise above those evil arguments, they are opinions that are raised in our minds. You see, that they talk about you, that they gossip about you, but you raise in prayer the power that Christ has given us to let what God has said concerning you rise up against what the enemy is plotting. First John chapter number 4, verse 4, popular scripture. Little children, you are from God and you have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in this world. So any powers in this world, Jesus in you and I, he or the Holy Spirit or our Father God with us, they are greater than anything they set up against us. Oh my God, this is so powerful. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9. The Bible says that be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls or rolls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. 
Resist him firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. So it's the same thing that the enemy has been doing. The same enemy has people who are who are ministers doing church for him. The devil has people in families who have evil spirits. They go to church, but they have it. Satan has people at job place who rise up against you being a true believer. So that is a warfare. It's not everybody you see in church who have good spirits. Some have evil spirit. But the good news is whether you know or not, the Bible says that you should be watchful. Watchful and then you have, God has already overcome them for you. So you need to instill, you need to enforce that. That is so powerful. Because the enemy is keeping the same suffering on people who do not know. Okay, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3. The Bible says that, but the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. So also believe that the Holy Spirit is with you. God has been able to save, uh, save you, kept you. God has kept you for many years. So believe in the word of God. He said, but the Lord is faithful. God himself, Jesus our Lord, will establish you and guard you against the evil one. So, which is very powerful here. Romans chapter 8 verse 37. The Bible says that, no, in all these things we are more than conquerors. Through him who loved us. Okay. Matthew chapter 18 verse 18 to 20. I already quoted it. It said, truly I say to you, Jesus is talking to the Christians or the disciples. He said, truly I say to you, whatsoever thing you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thing you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it shall be done for you by my Father God in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I, the Lord Jesus, am among them. I'm among them. This is so powerful. So you are always, always, even as, when you are alone, even as a Christian, you have got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So it's not only you. When we, you are with your children, you are more than one. When you are with a brother, you are more than one. When you are with your fiancé, you are more than one. When you are with a friend, you are more than one. The Bible says that the moment you start your warfare prayer, Jesus is there, making sure that everything is working uh, for your good and for my good. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17. The Bible says that no weapon that is fashioned or formed against you shall prosper or succeed. And you shall refute. You will destroy. You will, you will, you will annihilate. I'm using other words. You will refute every tongue that rises against you in judgment. Judge it. Let the word of God judge. Put the judgment of God on their lips and their head. Okay? Because it's your, it's your, I mean, uh, it's one of the privileges and your inheritance. That's the Bible says. It says, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their vindication from the evil one declares the Lord. You see, vindication. The God will vindicate you. Jesus will save you. Jesus will what? He will keep you with him. Psalm 91, we cannot quote everything. So let me just read one or two or three verses. Is that he who dwells in the shelter or the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You will say to the Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For God will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his, with his feathers. This one says with his pinions. God will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the, tor the terror. You see, you will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Beloved, it works. 
this is the what this is what God actually has blessed us with. And any spirit of witchcraft, witch, witchcraft and demonic plots, the Bible says that it can never overcome us. We will always rule over them. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 31, the Bible says that do not turn to mediums or necromancers. Do not seek them out. And so make yourself unclean by them. I am the Lord your God. Today, many demonic folks, we have what we call a human agent. Some of you have demonic spirit. Some of you goes to, uh, you know, idol worship place, right? Idolatry place. Somebody who goes there and the same time is leading in churches. Today we have a lot of them in our families, among churches, among pastors. He says don't get close to them. When you know them, do not get close to them. Now there are a lot of them. They will do juju stuff. They, will, they, will, they have demonic spirits and they are also leaders of churches. So Bible says that be careful about them. God says for I am the Lord. I hear that. Don't be around them. First Samuel 15, 23. The Bible says that for rebellion is as the sin of divin divination. Okay, being rebellion. You see, these evil spirits, they are, they are rebellion, you know, demonic. You know, they are, what you call it, um, they try to, they are manipulators. And they are evil doers. You know, a wife can be that. A husband can be that. A church leader can be that. They have evil spirit. But God says their time is near. Okay, so beloved, do not allow any evil spirit to what? To control your life, to control your children. No way. It's a first Samuel 15, 23. For rebellion is as the sin of divination. The presumption is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. You see, Saul was being rebellion, even going after, you know, witchcraft, you know, and uh, soothsayers and, you know, uh, fortune tellers. God says, I hate that. But Saul was, you know, inquiring from them. So the Bible says that God took his spirit away from Saul. There are many leaders who are practicing demonic spirits in their churches among families and others that they are saying that they have Christ, but they are lying. So be careful about these people. Always they try to seek for people they can take to juju, people they can mess up their destiny. So, is this, so that's why some of us, you know, I ask myself, why can't you live without me? Some people, they cannot live <laughs> without you doing the work of God. So beloved, that is how life is. God says, I hate this thing. So as a Christian in your warfare, you have to be very careful. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10 to 12. There shall not be found among you anyone who bears his son or his daughter as an offering, anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets omens, or a sorcerer or a charmer or a medium or a necromancer or one who inquires of the dead. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. And because of this abomination, the Lord your God is driving them out before you. So anybody who is practicing this, what Deuteronomy 18.10 talks about, God will drive them before you. They will die before you. All this witchcraft, demonic attacks and all that. There are fake men of God doing it. There are musicians doing it. There are... Uh, women who lead prayers doing men who lead prayers. There are people with evil spirit behind and uh, standing before the altar of God. God says he will show them where the, where the power is. So beloved, you need to pray this kind of prayer because you don't know. It could be in your own family, among pastor friends, among... You don't know. Now Christianity, it's not the way we thought it should be. Okay? Revelation chapter number... 21 verse 8, I normally call this. He said, but as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Somebody might be putting their mind on somebody who is weak or somebody who is being attacked 
with sexual, you know, immoral attacks. Sometimes some people don't want to do it. It's, it's, it's demonic incantation because those who stand before the pulpit, those who are doing this, they practice all these things that the Bible is talking about. They are murderers. They murder their friends. They murder church members. You see, they are murderers. The Bible says that their end shall be in the sulfur. You know, their end will be in the lake. That what? That burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. So this is a spiritual warfare that is our Lord Jesus Christ teaching you this. Some people are, they will do, they don't care to do anything. They don't care to go after anybody. You don't care to, to, to mess them up or to cause God to strike them. You should also not care. That's how life is. Okay. First Timothy 4 1. The Bible says, and now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. Nowadays it's common. You're going to see church leaders, church deacons, whether they have evil spirit, they fly. <laughs> and they're still standing before God. Never I say, God is, I don't know. Our Father God is different. If I'm God, oh my God, I will clear all these people. Maybe you will win because it, 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 wickedness cannot build a nation. It cannot build a family. And that is where we are now. So as a Christian, you must rise up to pray against these attacks. Okay? Ephesians 6, 12, the Bible says that for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, okay? Against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. I think I quoted that one already, okay? And then 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14 to 15, the Bible says that, and no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. You see? Satan, he can come like an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. So we heap every evil incantation. So there are some wicked and false men of God. They are with some wicked and demonic men of God. They, they call themselves men of God, but they have demonic spirit. Jesus even knows. Okay? The Bible says that they pray, they can come as a light. But the Bible says that God will what? Correspond. Their end will correspond with their deeds. We heap their wicked incantation and projection. We heap it upon their head. My dear brother or sister, this is how you should pray because today people are wicked and they are all in, in, in the house of God. Everybody go and hide themselves in the house of God. Trust me. Acts chapter 16, verse 16 to 18. The Bible says, and as we were going to the place, look at what happened. Paul did. Place of prayer. We were met by a slave girl who had the spirit of divination and brought her owners much gain by fortune telling. She followed Paul and asked, crying out, These men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. It's a lie. He's trying to manipulate them with, his, with her spirit. And this she kept doing for this many days. So Paul, having become greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of her right there and she could not perform it again. Any spirit that is against your children, any demonic spirit against your marriage, any demonic spirit coming from your family, from fake and evil men of God against your life, may that spirit terrorize them. May that spirit destroy their own body in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Micah chapter 5 verse 12, he said, I will cut off sorceries from your hand and you shall have, you shall, you shall have no more tellers of fortunes. God says, I will cut them for that means I will kill them. Okay, Isaiah chapter 8 verse 19. And when they say to you, inquire of the mediums and the uh, necromancers who chirp and mutter 
Should not a people inquire of their own God? Should they inquire of the dead on behalf of the living? You see, this is what people are doing and still come to the house of God. Instead of them to proclaim our Father God, instead of them to work for our Lord and Savior Jesus, they are doing something else. Some are even offering church members. <laughs> I'm telling you. And these are men who are really, really teaching. They can really teach you. You might think they have no evil spirit, but look at their deeds, what they have been doing to families. So you have to be very careful when it comes with spiritual warfare. Okay? Isaiah chapter number 8 verse 19, I already quoted it. In First Chronicles chapter 10 verse 13, the Bible says that so Saul died for his breach of faith. He broke faith with the Lord in that he did not keep the command of the Lord and also consulted a medium seeking guidance. There are people who are preaching in puppets, consulting medium. They want, they want their church to grow. They don't know the right way. And listening to your father, God, will grow your ministry. It's God who grows the ministry. People are doing this stupid stuff. They are presenting at this hour, taking their uh, children at this hour, taking their uh, family members, doing stuff. May the Lord cause the, them we heap their sins upon their head. May the Lord cause them to die. No, you. No, but people were doing it. So the Bible says that. Exodus 22, verse 18. The Bible says that you shall not permit a sorcerer to live. So we command everybody around our children, everybody in the family, everybody with this evil sorcerer spirit, anybody with, you know, wizardry spirit may they fall and die themselves any ones that they are planning to destroy may we heap the destruction upon them anybody wherever our names and our children names are mentioned wherever that they take them may it catch fire may the lord disgrace them may they die instead of taking our children or anyone of mentioning our name or what Casting spell, we pray and we heap it back on their own head. Beloved, these are the kind of prayers you need to pray. May the Lord richly bless you. Bye-bye.